the introductory rites, which of course include the opening procession as well as the opening hymn, they're a way to gather God's people together. Ecclesia in Greek, so a literally calling out of the world into the church. It's just so appropriate that God would say, come on everybody, this is the Catholic Church after all. It means universal. It means everyone's part of the whole. It's the biggest religion in the world. Of course, there's some of everybody in there. So when we think of the introductory rites, beginning with the gathering of the people, we have to first begin by remembering that the church is the mystical body of Christ, that through the Holy Spirit, we are now all united in Christ. Why do we sit and stand and kneel at different parts of the Mass? There's a beautiful point to why we have the different postures in the Mass. Because we are body and soul, the way we pray shows itself forth in our posture as well. And because we gather as one body, we all want to assume the same posture in prayer. With the introductory rites especially, we're standing because standing is a posture of attentive prayer, kneeling is adoration, sitting attentive listening. As we gather at your table, as we listen... The introductory rites, which of course include the opening procession as well as the opening hymn, in some ways capture the imagination a little bit, like a holy parade you might call it. What is the reason for the procession? Since the Mass is literally a meeting of earth and heaven, where the church militant, the church suffering, and the church triumphant all join together in a hymn of praise and worship to God for all the great and wonderful things he has done in salvation history. There's a number of things that it actually symbolizes. The jubilant procession of the Ark of the Covenant, of David bringing it into the holy city. The procession into the heavenly Jerusalem. Christ's way to Calvary, for instance, the way of the cross. So, too, at the end of the procession, we have the priest who comes in in persona Christi capitis, in the person of Christ the head. This goes back to the day of the priest's ordination, when his soul is deeply and intimately united with Christ himself. The priest, on behalf of the people, will offer up the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which will be shown forth under the species of bread and wine, which will become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It's a solemn occasion, absolutely, because it's a sacrifice, but it's also a joy-filled, jubilant occasion as well, because we know that in the Paschal Mystery, the cross ends in the resurrection and the ascension of Christ. So there's a lot happening within the procession itself that's remarkable and beautiful at the same time. Why does the priest kiss the altar at the beginning of Mass? The altar symbolizes a few things. It symbolizes the cross. So when the priest reverences the altar, he's reverencing the cross, that beautiful and terrifying instrument on which Christ was crucified. All altars will contain a relic, which is oftentimes a piece of bone of a saint, or it could be a piece of cloth perhaps touched by a saint, a relic that represents um, a holy person, a friend of God. And we also see too that the altar is Christ because the mass is not simply looking back to what Jesus did, but instead it is an active participation in this living tradition. So Jesus himself is there present. Because the priest is entering into the sanctuary in persona Christi Capitis, in the person of Christ the head, when he kisses the altar, it's almost as if the priest is giving a kiss of peace to Christ and saying, please join me with you, unite me with you, so that as I carry out this liturgical action of sacrifice, on behalf of your people in your person for their good, help me to get out of the way <laughs> and allow yourself to actually work through me and through your people. After the priest reverences the altar and goes to the presider's chair, it begins with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why do we make this sign of the cross at the beginning of Mass? 
we do that because it's a very simple reminder of how our God is revealed to us as three distinct persons, one God. And we begin any prayer and any divine liturgical action in the name of God. And then there'll be the introduction. The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The gift of God to you all because of the gifts that God has given us, because of Christ becoming man, being the sacrifice and sacrificing himself for us, and then rising from the dead, ascending to the Father, sending the Holy Spirit, we are now in communion with Jesus Christ. We are now able, as his mystical body, to offer up this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to God the Father for all that he has done through his Son, Jesus Christ. And the people respond, and with your spirit, why do we say, and with your spirit? The priest is not celebrating the Mass in his own name. He's celebrating it in the person of Christ. Again, acknowledging that the priest is acting in persona Christi. The spirit that animates you, so, and with your spirit, it's speaking to that ontological character that the priest now has by right of his ordination. So there is a sense of God through the priest addressing his people and welcoming them. As we enter into these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and we ask After the greeting from the priest, when we bring up the penitential rite, it's preparing our own souls to encounter God. And when we encounter God, particularly with any sacrifice, we are called to come before him in contrition for our sins so that we can offer up with him a pure sacrifice to God, so that we can be disposed to receive the gifts that he wants to communicate to us. There's a few different formulas that could be used for the penitential rite, and one is the Kyrie eleison. We have those Greek words that are pleading for our Lord's mercy. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. We can also have that incorporated after the Confidior. So I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. And it's a beautiful thing to confess not only to Almighty God, but also to our brothers and sisters. Because if we recall what our Lord boils down all the commandments to, it's two of them. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So it's fitting and right that we confess that we have not only sinned against God, but we sinned against our brothers and sisters as well. The same brothers and sisters who are sitting in these pews with us, asking for that same forgiveness. We trust will be forgiven by the goodness of God so that we can then offer up in union of hearts and minds this one sacrifice of praise to God and partake of the meal together as brothers and sisters who have been reconciled not only with God, but with one another. Once we've had the opportunity to acknowledge our faults, to acknowledge God's great mercy revealed to us through Jesus, then we're able to praise God with the glory of... Glory to God, glory to God. The beginning words are the same words that the angels used as they appeared to the shepherds when Christ was born. Glory to God in the highest. And we're giving glory to God for the wonderful work that he has done throughout all of salvation history. A beginning with Adam and Eve, through the fall, through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, God has never ceased to do wonderful and marvelous deeds for his people to be a good shepherd who searches after the lost sheep and never abandon us in our sinfulness. What is the reason for singing during Mass? Liturgical music is scripture. It's specifically supposed to raise our minds and hearts to God in exultant praise. And so the music throughout the Mass is always meant to accompany the liturgical action that is happening. And participation is so important. Being present is so important. If Christ is fully present at Mass and we are not, we are responsible for a disconnection. 
And one of the ways that we make sure that we are staying present is by singing from our heart and soul. If the entire congregation sings together, they sound as though it's one beautiful voice that almost echoes the harmony that exists between the Holy Trinity itself. So following the Gloria and that beautiful hymn of praise comes the Collect. And the Collect begins with, And together, let us pray. Why do they call it the Collect? The reason why it's called the Collect is that the priest essentially collects the prayers of the people in the church. We have praised God with the opening hymn to acknowledge our faults for the penitential act. And then with the Kyrie, we remember Christ's mercy. And with the glory, we have joined the angels in heaven by proclaiming God's glory. And collectively, in one voice, offer the opening prayer to God, which then sets the tone for the liturgy of the word. 